Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about some of the new information that we got in the past week from media previews. Now, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was given to a bunch of news outlets and YouTubers to basically watch 40 to 50 minutes of new footage and ask questions, learn about certain features, find out what's returning in these remakes and what's not, and find out what's new. I want to go over some of the key things that we learned in today's video and discuss some of the reactions that I've seen to them. Also, this video might be a little bit shorter than usual. I'm actually home this weekend from college, so I didn't want to leave you guys without a discussion video, so I put this together right before I left. Regardless, I hope you enjoy it, I hope you find it interesting, and let's jump right into things. So a bunch of media outlets got to play, or at least watch other people play, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. The embargo was lifted this, this previous week, and we got to learn a bunch of new information about the games. Now there were a bunch of little nuances, and before we get to the things that they did announce, I just want to mention some of the things they didn't. There is no confirmation or denial of a battle frontier. There is no explanation as to how you're going to transfer in Pokemon or send Pokemon from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl into Pokemon Home. There is no confirmation of how much Platinum content is existing, and there is no confirmation of if there's a National Dex, and that includes Pokemon that were originally released after Generation 4. None of that was confirmed, or at least none of that was confirmed and then allowed to be made public by some of these writers and these YouTubers. But they did find a bunch of new information, some new things that are returning from Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, and some things that are quality of life features from more recent Pokemon games that are being introduced into the Sinnoh region. Let's start with some of those quality of life features, things that are from recent games, but not everything from recent games is inherently good. One of the ones that is good though, something that we talked about a couple weeks ago, there are no more HMs. You do not teach your Pokemon these moves anymore. They are strictly a feature on the Pokatch, and that is the only place that they're used. So you do not have to teach any Pokemon fly, surf, cut for overworld purposes. I would imagine that surf and fly are still going to be battle moves because people love using surf with water type Pokemon. It's a very effective attack, uh, but it will not be used as an overworld ability. They are all reserved to the Pokatch. That's really good. It's really good to see that Ilka and the Pokemon company are adapting to the more modern Pokemon games where most of these overworld intrusions, they don't really affect your team or your ability to build a team that best reflects the Pokemon that you want to use. The other quality of life feature that seems to be returning is that you can access the box from anywhere. If you want to be out on a route and you want to switch Pokemon out of your team of six, you can do that now. You can go right into your box and grab a seventh or an eighth team member. You can have as big of a team as you want. These are two of probably the most popular modern Pokemon features. I understand that there are a couple detractors from the box that say that it diminishes your kind of like the mood and the tone of going on a journey with a team of six. But again, it's an option. You don't have to use the box out on routes if you don't want to. I actually fall in that camp. I'm not a big fan of swapping Pokemon from my party out on a route. I'm a big fan of using a core team of six and sticking with that team throughout my adventure. But I acknowledge that this is a really good feature for a lot of other people. So for these quality of life improvements, I am very happy. Before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel, as you can see by this lovely graphic. Now, of course, subscribing is free, and you can unsubscribe at any time, and it would really do a lot to show me that you guys are enjoying these brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl videos, and that you want to see more of them in the future. So with that being said, be sure to subscribe, and let's get back into the topic. Now, of course, there are other modern aspects of Pokemon games that are going to be coming to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and this is the one that feels the most controversial. The EXP share, as it is in most modern games, is a feature that is on from the very beginning, and it is not toggleable. All of your Pokemon in your party and your team of six are going to gain experience when you defeat a Pokemon in battle, whether it's wild or trainer or when you capture a Pokemon. That's another modern feature that's coming into these games. If you are a new Pokemon fan, the XP share was an item that you gave specifically to a certain Pokemon in the original Diamond and Pearl games. And when you caught Pokemon in the original Diamond and Pearl, you didn't get experience. That's a more recent change as well as the XP share. Now listen, 
I did a video just a couple days ago talking about the difficulty of Pokemon games and where Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are going to fall on that scale. And we did not have the EXP share information at the time. It does definitely change how these games are going to be played. It 100% does. There's no questioning that. And this inclusion as a feature is going to make the game easier. If you have a party of six at all times and you have the EXP share on permanently, your entire party is going to gain experience. It's going to change the difficulty of the game. It's going to make the Sinnoh region easier. Sinnoh is a historically difficult region. It is, has difficult gym leaders, it has a difficult Elite Four, and the boss battles with Team Galactic are nothing to just laugh over. It's a harder game, and it's harder, one, because of the limitations of the Pokedex in the Sinnoh region, but also just the typings that the evil team uses, and again, the fact that it's an older Pokemon game, and there is no modern experience share. It's just not there. It's here now. It'll make the game easier, and I am one of many who doesn't like that it's a forced feature. I have no problem with the experience share, and there are many playthroughs of Pokemon games where I use the experience share turned on, and I like having the ability to not have to grind all of my Pokemon individually and have my entire team gain experience as they go. Because when I'm playing through Pokemon games, sometimes I just want to experience the world, build up a team, and play through the story. The difficulty and losing is not really something I plan to do. But when I play a Pokemon game for the first time, I want to experience it differently. I want it to be a little bit harder. I want to kind of take my time with it. And the experience share for me in that circumstance doesn't aid in that quest. So it is here. There's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's here to stay. This is how experience share is going to work. And unfortunately, it doesn't appear based on most of the, uh, most of the articles and most of the videos that it is toggleable. We'll move on to a more loved topic uh, than the experience share, and that is Pokemon contests. They appear to have been changed from the original. The original Pokemon contest can go anywhere from like 7 to 15 minutes in length, and it's a very lengthy, multi-stage process. It appears from some of these articles that Pokemon contests have been radically changed. They are now a rhythm-based game that only takes up to three minutes, and there's a bunch of different categories in which you can participate in. So if you're someone who's into contests, they're changing. And I would love to know if you guys are someone who enjoys Pokemon contests, enjoys what they originally were. How do you feel about this change? Because I'm not exactly one to speak on it, I was never a big Pokemon contest guy when I was growing up as a kid. Um, they just felt like there was no real reward for doing them. And whenever you got the introduction and the example of how to do the contests, it was so monotonous and it was so arbitrary that it never really stood out as something that I was interested in. But I'd love to know what you guys think about contests. We also got some new information out the Grand Underground, more specifically confirmation about how statues work. If you have more statues of a certain type of Pokemon, so grass or fire, those Pokemon are going to appear more in the underground pockets of wild Pokemon. We also got confirmation that in the Grand Underground, all of the Pokemon are going to be out roaming in the overworld. As opposed to Pokemon in the above ground Sinnoh region, it's only going to be through the tall grass. So the only Pokemon that are going to be out of their Pokeballs in the overworld of Sinnoh that's not the Grand Underground are going to be the ones that are following you once you get to Amity Square. We also learned some information about Poffins. There's a Poffin Maker in Amity Square. It's no, it no longer has the multiplayer feature to where you can contribute ingredients to Poffins of other people and make the Poffins better only through that multiplayer ability. Poffins are still going to be a multiplayer feature. You can still make them with friends, but that specific way of getting specific Poffins is not going to be there anymore. These are all the big things that we learned from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl in this overview. One of the other ones, smaller one just for you shiny hunters, is that autosave is there. It can be turned off in settings, but autosave is a feature. Like I said, these are some of the features we learned about. These are the most important that I noticed. If you want to get a full rundown of every single little thing that was written about, there's a ton of articles and a ton of YouTube videos. I encourage you to go read up on them if you're someone who's planning on playing Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and is okay with those kind of spoilers. But I just wanted to start a little bit of a dialogue here. What do you think about some of these big changes in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Does it take away from your excitement for the game or does it enhance it? Let me know down in the comment section below. And let's talk about some of these features. EXP share is going to be a big one, I am sure. And I am ready for the negativity. Believe me, I'm there with you. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. 
I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>